Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. OU wins. The Bedlam series in Norman may have come to an end to last night. Um, and OU wins 28 to 13. This was. Well, at some point in the game, it was 28 to 15. Uh, that's right. On the scoreboard briefly for, for a few for, minutes. For a few minutes, and it then was 28-15. Somehow went back to 28 to 13. But I think the final score was 28-13, <laughs> yeah. and so they scored negative two points somehow. <laughs> well, I'm Steve. Lucas. Connor. Jay. And we are. Um, I don't know. We're we are happy with the victory, but I tell you, there's lots of exclamation points on what we're about to share, and not by any means are all of them good. There's definitely some good ones, though. We need, to, we need to make sure that we, we get in the good notes. One good note is OU has now achieved 91 victories over the Cowboys in this quote-unquote so-called, some people think it is, a rivalry. That ties Nebraska over Kansas for the most times one team has beaten another team in all of FBS football. 92, right? 91. Oh, 91? 91. Hmm. So I think I'm right year. on that. So Next year you got to... Finish them off. Finish oh, yeah. them off. 91, yeah, that's right. So, um, see if next year we can finish them off and, and achieve that record. And then I think that should be the scheduling dictate that we only schedule OSU if Nebraska has scheduled and beaten Kansas, <laughs> yep. which they would not have done this year. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, before we get into the heart of it, I just want to say uh, a belated uh, happy birthday to my dad, Ron. He turned 70 years old yesterday and I promised him a victory over the Cowboys for his birthday. I delivered in the first quarter and then we spent three quarters trying to give that present back and that let's get into that because it really was a tale of one quarter and then three quarters of absolute frustrating ineptitude on offense. On defense Absolutely great defense. Most complete game of the season. Couldn't have asked for anything better. Unbelievably good defense. Except for a couple dropped in. As much as we're worried and we, we fret about about the defense all throughout this year, their their fits and starts, man, did they deliver last night against what we know is a pretty good offense. We know a good offensive play caller in Mike Gundy, who I guess would have been OU's coach if he would have come here years ago. <laughs> and and a good, a very good quarterback, uh, preseason All Big Twelve quarterback, Spencer Sanders. Defense was tremendous yep. all night long. Couldn't ask for more. But I think let's it's the get the defense that we were told we were going to see for most of the smothering, season. Smothering, physical, physical, closing relentless. down in the right places, relentless, for in the right places, everything. Yeah, and that never happens. It feels like for us, is uh, our guys we, being. We watch the all these other is. games of the ball so. being tipped and somebody being behind it somehow and. Over and over, we watch it in college football, and we we keep wondering when is that ever going to happen to us. Last game there it was. Us, and it was. Was, uh, was like Florida. If anything, we left a lot on the table because yeah. we dropped some interceptions. But I, I want to start with just saying that what a microcosm that game was for our entire season. We start red hot, we go cold as ice, we have horrific clock management, and we have among other things Gabriel and perhaps Levy showing us that they're just not good enough. Let's get into all that. Let's get you guys' views on, on what went on. We're going to quote a lot of just absolutely fascinating stats. What were your big takeaways? Well, the first quarter. Uh, no, I mean, I think a big takeaway, the crowd was everything we thought it was, and it was rowdy last night. It was great. An awesome atmosphere. And then I think on top of that, uh, like I just said, that, that defense, the relentlessness and the physicality and just – the full performance that we've been waiting to see from that side of the ball finally happened. Uh, biggest takeaway, I think, though, is like you just mentioned, the, the frustration that we all saw uh, in the, the last three quarters of the game when the offensive production that we looked like we were having or about to have for the entire night completely crashed and burned after that fourth touchdown in the first quarter. So um, it's frustrating. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to have some consistency across the board, but it's hard when uh, – it's hard watching a team that can't go out and just completely put together a full performance. So, yeah, just another another game of non-complimentary football. <laughs> just in, in it just went the opposite way this time than, than most of the other games this season. Right. Well, I mean, I think that we've done the same thing. We did the same thing that we did um, throughout a lot of the season, which was not give our defense proper rest, but. The defense definitely complemented the offense in a way, like you're saying, that was reversed, where the defense put the offense in great positions time and again, and the offense just completely sputtered. So 
I think it was you, Lucas, who said, uh, quoted the stat, which was just phenomenal. And that is, we had only, I think, one drive that was greater than a minute 31 in length of game time, which is fine if you're scoring 65 points. But we weren't. We only scored 28 points, and all of them came in the first quarter. And, and turnovers were a big part of that. And turnovers were a big part of that. Short field. So that that is just stunning when you when you look at the composition of that game, especially as it went on into the fourth quarter, thinking about what we needed to do to make sure we preserve victory and how that is not going to get the job done. I was just growing with a greater and greater sense of dread that they were going to get into this game and put us in a position where we were going to have to score to take the lead again. Yeah, it's rare as a fan to have to hold on to a game for that long. Like normally you take a I mean, fourth quarter four lead. Touchdowns. In the you, first quarter. Four no, touchdowns. But I mean, like, right, it's fourth quarter. You have, there's like 10 minutes to go. You're dreading it. Like, oh, come on, we got to hang on to this. Let's, let's run some clock. No, we waited for three quarters with everyone seeing what the offense isn't doing and isn't capable of, and we're just hanging on. And everyone has the same dread in the pit of their stomach. Like, this, we are going to mess around, and this is going to be – a game with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And we're going to see an onside kick, and and it was a game. I'll, I'll be honest, it was close. It was close to being a game with two minutes. People to go. were leaving when the game was still in doubt. That Very was the crazy so. part to me. Well, yeah, because there was six minutes to go, which is like I don't That's know, like four nine possessions, possessions for OSU. For yeah. State or something. Well, I told my dad after the first quarter, I said, "This is like the jump around game." I, I'm thinking in between third and fourth quarter, we're going to get jump around, and everybody's going to go nuts because it's going to be. 42 to 7 or something at that point and that would have only been two more touchdowns right (laughs) you know in two more quarters which didn't seem out of the realm of possibility when you get four to start (laughs) and then it just slowly devolved into the slowest game of all time as far as actual time going i don't know how long the game ended up being it seemed like that was the longest game i've sat through in many years because of all the turnovers on you it know, was punting. almost four hours, um, I can just say, roughly speaking, thinking about when, yeah, different when things left. that were happening when I looked at it. Well, watch. considering the lack of scoring, how long it took, yeah. right? Like, if you're if both right. teams are scoring at will, yeah. the game was just constantly slowdown. stopped. Yeah, yeah. if it's it OU, Texas time. Tech, you know, but Baker versus no Holmes, that's a long game. And yeah, it was but, taking four. Yeah. Because it was so many three and outs, so we had 10 three and outs. We had 11 punts in the game. It seems like 47 of those 11 came in the fourth quarter. Um, we, we're going to get into the details of clock management in just a second. But um, after the first quarter, we were 6 of 22 for 35 yards. Um, was the quote that you, uh, 6 of 22 on third down? Is that correct? Or no, that's in the last two games. That's the last two games. That's two one, games. One, one of 11. One no, of 11. No, two and no, 26. Two and 26 the last two games. Two and twenty-six. Yeah, two and twenty-six. Yeah. Oh, Gabriel was six down. of twenty-two. Gabriel was six of twenty-two after the first quarter yes. for thirty-five for yards. Thirty-five yards, I and think. that's after a record-setting first quarter. So, and that's that, three full quarters of football. That was the the most first half points in Bedlam history, and I got a, a a little bit of an addendum on that one. That's pretty stunning, but it's the third most yards in a first quarter in any OU game. And that's saying something because we've had a lot of games with fast starts. But even though we had 299 yards, if I'm remembering right, the most half, uh, the most um, first half points in Bedlam history, OU outgained us for the rest of the of the OSU, of the, OSU outgained us for the rest of the game. So the the 299 yards, the most in Bedlam history. I think I screwed that up. And OSU outgains us for the rest of the game. There's no excuse for that. No. I With the differential that we had at that point, I should I should look that up and see what Gabriel, that was. Gabriel missed his last 13 or 14 passes in a row. That's terrible, man. It's it, unreal. Back to highlighting the defense. Thank God for the defense. Oklahoma State had a, over a, a 100 plays, I think 101 plays. They had the fewest points in the history of major college football at 13 or less when you have greater than 100 plays, which is stunning. Um, 
And if you would have told me OSU is going to have 100 plays of football I'm going terrified. into that game, I would be terrified for what the score might have been. I would probably give up 50 points. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, just awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, let's talk about the clock management. It's something that we harped on a lot in the Lincoln-Riley era. And dare I say at this point, it looks even worse, at least from a standpoint of the very specific, when you need to drain and milk the clock, we look like we have no clue that that's even an option. It's absolutely pathetic what we do. We were snapping the ball, arguably incorrectly, in the third quarter, unarguably, inarguably incorrect in the fourth quarter with 14, 15, 20 plus no, seconds 26, on the clock. 22, 24. It was over and over. And I'm not asking you to, to go down to three seconds and snap, but inside of 10 is a reasonable amount. And – not huddling is is what I don't understand. Levy's offense is up-tempo, but how can you not at some point I – w- I wanted to play in the second half. I said we should start getting this down inside of 15 seconds for most of the third quarter, and then if we've still got about the same lead, I'm, I'm just asking for inside of 10 seconds at that point. Five would be optimal. But why are you not huddling up and then – no matter how much motion you're going to run, if you line up at 12 seconds, you can run your motion and you're snapping the ball with five seconds left. And no matter what the play is, even if it's an incomplete pass, you've still knocked 20 seconds off what we were snapping at at 25, 26 seconds. And that's per play when we had six three and outs in a row. So doing all the math that before we did the pod, we were talking about at minimum just the fourth quarter, there would have been four less minutes on the clock. Yeah, we which, had six which, drives. Which equated to almost three full possessions for OSU. <laughs> six drives, adding that incremental drain of the clock. You're looking at four minutes off that clock. That game ends four minutes of play clock early. So wherever the ball was at that point, roughly speaking, you can just say that's the end of the game. Yeah, that stuff never happened. And everything else that should not have happened. We, we were joking, and it, it sucks in a victory to, to have those type of deprecating self jokes but how their game plan is so smart because they just keep giving us the ball back knowing that they're going to get it um they they're going to have seven more possessions and there's only four minutes left yeah people, uh, were, people were laughing at gundy because he was punting on situations that we thought he should have gone for it but he and i'm thinking <laughs> we're so stupid that we're not going to run the clock down that and he's he, going to get more possessions with better field it, position. with better field position yeah even though we had amazing punts I mean, he had over 500 and what, 530 something yards of punts. Yeah, on his 11 punts, just great job by Turk. Yeah, Turk he was killed amazing. It. Yep. Um, Got engaged after the game. He had, mm-hmm. yeah. Congrats, Congrats to him. And Grace Lyons, right? Yep. Very, very, very frustrating. Uh, it, it's it seems like something because it is something that is not difficult to to fix in game. This is not a complex strategy we're asking you to do. That and part is extremely fixable. It. Guys. It's very fixable. That part is very yeah. fixable. The it's fixable o- in the, the only moment. thing on this team is fixable is that. It, it that is, just takes a little coaching. It doesn't even, you can even do a gimmick, like you're saying, to huddle or force yourself to not approach the line at that time, yeah. and you can achieve what we're asking. <clears throat> and, and the fact that they're not doing it is really concerning in terms of this coaching staff. And I look at both. Levy and Venables in that respect, and then also to think that they just either don't see it or refuse to correct it either speaks to stubbornness or just absolute ignorance in not seeing the long span of the game and strategically the position it puts you in. I'm I know it's difficult. I just, but that's how the thing, can like, you get paid that much money and not know how clocks work? Well, I don't even know if there's just so much what going on. It, it's 100% not, stubbornness. I don't think it's stubbornness. It's what do you Levy, think it is? It's Levy stubborn to his system of always up tempo. That's what it is. I would say that's also then ignorance, but what do you think it is? Yeah, that's Jay? what I mean. I, th- I just think it's overall ignorance because. Oh, it is. I, Stoops, hey, Stoops at one no point, when Heupel's, for when Heupel's offensive coordinator, Stoops at one point s- said into, the, into his headset, run the effing ball to Heupel because he kept calling all this, you know. Pass play stuff. Yeah, raid, he was running the raid, and we're trying to protect the lead and keep the defense off the field so they can catch a breather. And he mouthed the words, run the effing ball on Cameron, and we were like, yeah, no no crap. So is and the whole more- game I'm thinking, why is 
the whole fourth quarter. I don't know how Brent doesn't notice that. Right. Yeah, the ignorance part is on Brent too. I mean, yeah. it it doesn't. I almost blame everybody because how I someone do. like Demarco can't even bring it up. What are you too scared to go tell your coach? Like, dude, what are, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, why are we not milking the clock? Yeah, or here's what I'm somebody, here's what I'm seeing. Somebody yeah. has to say something. I even take it on the players. Is there no players that are, are like coach? Well, we're yelling. What it, are we doing? But we're of course too far away. Are the guys right behind the bench? Is everyone there not yelling at it yeah. so they can actually hear it? All the fans there saying, guys, what are you doing? Quit snapping the ball so early. Uh, yeah, and it's not just the fact that an incomplete, you know, I'm not saying completely go away from passing, but obviously an incompletion stops the clock. But to do what we were doing and and the three and outs that were a minute six, a minute 12 or whatever, you were, you'd be better off literally downing the ball the entire fourth quarter and we would have got out of that. They would have been out of the game four minutes earlier. Well, that's the thing. Just it, downing the ball. It, Just downing the ball. Yeah. I think the most frustrating part is Brent Venables has been in coaching rooms for the last 35 20, years. 20-plus years. Yeah, 30-plus years. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's not like – you're not going to tell me in, in major college football programs, they're not having discussions around game management, and if we get in this situation, this is how we need to handle it, et cetera. And if, if we're not having those discussions, then again – Brent, Brent has said time and time again he's been at places where things work. I'm sure Dabo Sweeney has had those conversations with the rest of his staff. And I, we've seen what hands-off does where Lincoln was hands-off with the defense and let them go do their thing, and it, we never got us to where we needed to go. Brent Venables needs to be a head coach and have that conversation like Bob has with Heupel and say, Jeff, what the hell are we doing right now? My defense has been on the field for 75% of the game. Let's figure this out. Yeah, that's what's frustrating. You would think he would recognize m- my defense is playing their butts off. They they barely got to sit down, and you're sending my defense right back on yeah, the field. Yeah, why isn't Ted yeah. Roof saying something about it? Why isn't every defensive coach saying something Thank about it? Thank God commercial breaks are three and a half minutes now. In so that yeah, they, they could have, only rest they could have a, a yeah. rest. I mean, the time possession was 37-38 to 22-22. And that could have easily been five to six minutes better in our favor and made the game closer to 30 and 30. If Even if we've just picked up a couple extra first downs because you're not throwing the ball incomplete, but also the huddle gives, the huddle gives you a chance to, to even get your offensive line a break in between plays. Because when you're running them so fast, which we've done all season, and that's part of Levy's scheme, is they talked about the offensive line really has to be fit to be able to run this offense. And that's that's fine and dandy if it's actually working. But at the point where the offense is on the field and you're running play and then the 40-second clock starts and in 14 seconds you're snapping the ball again and then that play ends and then 14 seconds you're snapping the ball again and then you're punting. It, it made no sense. Not, yeah, none of there, it made there, any there's sense. There's no strategy. Mm-mm with the hurry up if the hurry up isn't work. working yeah well and, and i would give him the slightest amount of grace early in the in the debacle that was three quarters if you said well things were working so good in the first quarter we're trying to keep it rolling we're trying to get the the score to where we want it to be very comfortably but as the game rolls on it's clear it's very clear that's not going to be the way this game's going to go I, unless you had some bet on the over under you need to just decide, okay, I'm really happy with where this is. I'm really happy with a 28-3 to victory. I need to just go ahead and figure out a way to lock this in and run the clock. Did you see? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yep. So comments from the audience about the uh, New England Patriots and, and what they just achieved. Um, it's clear... That, that offense wasn't working any longer. Right. So at that point, if you're in any way taking the head coach's point of view, which is big picture, you realize this is no longer working. I have to switch gears and come up with a strategy that's going to run the clock appropriately and, and get our team in a position to win. And they never seem to understand that. It, it would be, like I say, very different if we could look at it and say, well, the offense was still running. They're just coming up short. They're, they're driving the length of the field, and then a weird thing happens, like the Braden Willis uh, fumble on the, what, five-yard line or yeah. so early in the first quarter. That wasn't the case at all. So it's, it's inexcusable what we saw in terms of 
deep into the fourth quarter especially, them not changing strategies and figuring out what we needed to do to just lock in this victory and walk off the field. Gives me a lot of concern for the future, I'll be honest. It, it makes me question not Levy's intelligence necessarily, but what we go back to the stubbornness. Uh -huh. It just seems, and if it is ignorance and you just, oh, never thought that maybe we should start snapping the ball later to keep the defense, get, get them some rest and run some clock to try to salt this game away, I mean, then I don't, I don't know what that says about him as a human being that you can't see it. I texted Eli, who's in the press box, and he said they were all talking about it early in the fourth quarter. Because mm -hmm. I texted him with 10.03 left, and I, I said, hey, can you ask this question at the press conference? And he said, we're all talking about it up here. I mean, there's 80,000 people that are all yelling the same thing <laughs> that are just – Well, nobody around me was, but I was, I was vocal enough that – Anybody within the entire section 16 from at least the 40th row up to 72 and around could hear me yelling about. Well, people were around clock. us were, were yelling it. We were definitely yelling it more than anyone. And my friends that said elsewhere in the stadium as well as at home, they're all noticing it and saying the same thing. So it's, it's just quite apparent to anyone who's got the least bit of open eyes about what's going on. So I, I really don't understand it. If you're so one dimensional, that you can't change your game plan up in that fashion? I don't know if you are, are suited to coach high school football. Yeah, it, We're no. not asking for a, a really big change in your strategy. Yeah, it's or not a major tactics. game plan. It's literally huddle up and just then run the same game plan. The thing and, you're going to do, yeah. just do it with, with less time on the What I really hated was the bootlegs that we seem to have run six or eight times during the game. And OSU, the defensive end, held his position and Chase Gabriel – and there was we had some third downs that he he completely missed stoops on one um, that would have been a first down. Uh, there was one where he kind of juked the guy out and threw to somebody the Farouk. Farouk dropped come, it. He, he juked somebody out in the pocket, mm -hmm. ran out to the side and threw it to Farouk who had at least three drops, which that's been his worst game. But I, it just none of it makes any sense. We saw. I, I don't want to let the officials off the hook. We saw several. Very questionable or just ridiculous calls. There's a mythical holding call at one point. There is just an, numerous things that's, that stymied us that as you look at them in real time and then on replay, we fail to see where those penalties actually are occurring. And then, of course, Oklahoma State runs 67 straight plays, uh, passing plays, with, without a single holding call. Yeah, 67 um, pass plays. That, and we were getting... Tons of pressure, too. It's yeah, not like lots of pressure. All night long, we were just they were stymieing us, and he just had nope. all the time to throw in the pocket. He was harassed the entire night, and we, there's, guys, there's guys coming off the edge, there's guys coming off the middle, there's corner blitzes, and nobody got held. <laughs> 67 pass plays. Nobody. Yep. <laughs> not, not once. Not one. <laughs> so can't let them off the hook yet again, but I think our, our major complaint and major concern is just how absolutely – awful the offense looked and it's a combination of not running enough clock between plays and then obviously I think playing scared I took it as they were playing scared and timid they or they just weren't adjusting to whatever adjustments the Oklahoma State defense was making because in no way were they putting themselves in a position to succeed we definitely had some drops. It looks like the receivers are having a very difficult time getting open. I don't know if that's play call, if that's routes, if that's their training, if that's these level, these group of receivers. But it's, it's very frustrating to see the mistakes that they're making repeatedly. Uh, the, the running plays looked uninspired. I'll say that... Um, Barnes is a dude. Barnes is a dude. 9.8 yards per carry, but he only had six carries. Which he is needed still, more carries. That is completely baffling when you're trying to... You're trying to salt the game away, and it just makes no sense to not put a guy in there as kind of a bruising back yep. that still has it's speed go out and, be a and moves. Yeah, that could be he. He could have been the sermon, sermon for this exactly. Team. Right, exactly. I mean, Lincoln nailed that. You know, sermon ended up transferring because he didn't get to carry the ball enough. But sermon was a fourth quarter guy that literally would salt games away, and that could have easily been Barnes yesterday. And we saw him close the entire out fourth a lot quarter. of games. So. I think my biggest, one of my biggest frustrations, especially over the last couple of weeks, is is more likely than not, or more so, the fact that we're not getting um, the conversions on third down. And I just looked, so we've had 25 third downs. 
I'm really not projecting that speak much. Speak up. Am I really not? <laughs> like Don't move the mic. Just, just speak up. Um, we've had 25 third downs in... I, my voice just must not be there today. <laughs> I wonder what lots you of, did yesterday. Lots of yelling yesterday. <laughs> um, the truth comes out. Yeah. But 25 third downs, and we've only... We've converted how many of those? Two. Two. And out of that 25, 13 have been third and less than five yards. Third and five yards or less. So in those short third down and yardage situations, I, it just blows my mind how we're dead in the water if we're not winning first and second down for the most yep. part. So uh, that, that's the concerning part Are for me. Are we predictable? Really Are we soft? Well, they ran a direct snap to Gray on one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gabriel and Gray were in the backfield. He snapped it direct to Gray once. That He's was, the wrong player to direct snap it to anyway. And, and I will say, as, as great as Gray has been, he made a lot of bad cuts yesterday. Um, he did not have a very good game, for sure, for what appears to be his last game on, um, on Owen Field. He, he, he was serviceable and, and did well enough. I'm not going to lay much of the, the blame on the, the offense's weaknesses. I will say also, if we were to go back and analyze it, watch the game again, and you, know, you probably will, Jay, and maybe if you look for this and see if I'm right or wrong to any degree, but it seemed to me there was a little bit of gimmicky stuff that was working in the first quarter. And it, it, there definitely were some so just solid, straightforward plays that were working as well. But maybe that gimmicky stuff got closed down. And at that point, we were, we were without an offensive game plan. There were a lot of um, misdirection throws and um, some, some throws where you're really, you've got to find that one back who's coming out on a wheel route almost by design that that's the guy and you're it's it's kind of like a screen but it's down the field um and that only worked so much and that stopped working and at that point the offense wasn't really able to connect so as great as the offense looked i'm i'm almost wondering if it just wasn't a game plan that happened to catch them off guard and then they figured it out closed it down from there on out and we made no adjustments and we made no adjustments the, the yeah, their defense isn't good enough to shut it down from there on out which is Maybe with an adjustment they could the, do it. The play I don't that know. made no sense to me was the the fake pitch to the running back, and then you handed it off to him. So it's essentially like a delayed draw, and all you know for the most mm-hmm. part, with a little bit of misdirection if you want to call it that. But then you just ran into the middle of the line, which where it's just OSU's strong point mm-hmm. is their defensive line's been decent. Yeah, and you're you're just delaying the handoff, running into the back of the line, and you're gaining nothing. And I think we ran that at least three or four times. Where he, he literally was standing next to him, he faked like he was going to pitch it, and then just handed it off up the middle. And that yeah. didn't do anything. I didn't understand that either. We seem to stubbornly do the same plays over and over and over and over again. Uh, that And if, if they don't work the first two or three times you try them, then you should probably try something else. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have to be that creative it, of a it did, Yeah, it didn't have to be the most creative thing. It literally should have just been handing the ball off to a strong running back and even – even put a fullback, you know, Braden Willis coming back there blocking in the backfield. We haven't seen any of the stuff. And I know it was a different offensive coordinator, but I like having two backs in the backfield because <clears throat> there's so many different options you can run out of that. Either you fake the handoff to one, you pitch it to the other, or you do like the mesh where you hand it off to him and he runs and then the other guy blocks for him, but it just it was well, never for, for as good as what for as good as what Eric Gray's hands are in, in the past game. I don't know why we don't run with the two backs set more. Yeah. I mean, you're you have you have a dual threat running back in Eric Gray who can run the ball pretty well, and then if you put Barnes back there with him, I mean, that's a that's a great tandem. Yeah, the defense so, doesn't know if it's going to be Gray sneaking out on like a little um, wheel route or yeah. something, or it's going to be handed off to Barnes, or Barnes kind of leads the way to block for Gray. Right. I mean, it, it, I think there's a lot of questions that we have that aren't being answered in that aspect, and I. I think another thing is just we're not getting those gimme plays that we're so that we see everyone run. Mm-hmm. Like we're not running successful slant routes and converting on, you know, quick quickly on first and second down with stuff like that. And I, I felt like that's what we were doing in that first quarter, and then it just completely hit a wall. So it's frustrating. It's we're so used to being so offensively productive, <laughs> even with a. Well, we shouldn't. It's, just it's not like we're, our demands are unreasonable. No, we were just asking for any degree of offensive production, as well as some layered-in strategy of when to snap the ball and, and manage the clock properly. What else can we bitch about in terms of <laughs> a, a victory? Uh, I, I want to give thanks. A, it's thanks a strange to the game because it, it, it is a strange it feels, game. Feels. 
a little bit like last year's nine and zero. Oh, you're you, you're winning, but yeah, it just doesn't feel good. <laughs> I mean, the defense could. I mean, other like we said, they dropped a couple of interceptions, but there were also some of them were tips that just didn't come down with. But Colden played his ass off. That dude, he felt like he was dominating any receiver he was covering. Bowman's all over the field. A healthy all Bowman, over. big yeah, difference. Helps our yep. defense so much. It's not even funny. They had him up at the, you know four yards off the line of scrimmage a lot of times. Yeah, it looked like he was spying uh, Spencer completely. Yep. So it was it was a wrinkle from, there, yeah, from too. that aspect, it, that, uh, I mean. You, they did a lot of, like, extreme, like, uh, bailouts, too. Like, oh, normally him, him people look the like they're blitzing, and yep. then they'll back up. But we weren't just backing up. We had guys sprinting, turning 20 yards. the other way and sprinting, <laughs> yeah. to get, which is really strange. <laughs> yeah, there was a point where there was – Four down linemen and three guys, you know, Guaybu, Stutzman, and Bowman were all up within two yards in the line of scrimmage. They would snap, and a Guaybu would blitz, Stutzman drops back, and Bowman's sprinting 15, sprinting 20 to yards downfield to play yeah, safety. It was really weird. And, it, and OSU didn't know what to do. I mean, the only, the only game that they, they really had was Sanders running. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. O- Oklahoma State only had two plays. Spencer scrambling. And some sort of a crossing route. And that was the only two plays they had. That was yeah. the only thing that even began to work for them. So another tribute to the defense. Really great defense. Def- great scheme. A lot to hope for and a lot to be positive about looking at that. Equally a lot of concerns on the offense. Um, obviously better players correct a lot of little problems. But we can't just rely on extreme production. We're going to get ourselves into games where we want to run the clock. And you've got to be smart enough to figure out how to do that. And it can't just be we're going to pick up first downs and never give the ball back. It's going to take more than that. You can't rely on that by any means. Uh, that That's a concern. That's Hats off to the uh, kickoff play. Um, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Who who caught that? Farouk? No, Bowman threw it over. Oh, yeah, to Bowman him. caught it and yeah. threw it to Mims. Yeah, Mims, uh-huh. Man. Step away from take house. Yeah. I don't, you, you can't run that more than, like, three times in a season. Mm-hmm. But – that was a great great time to run it because yeah. the offense was stagnant at that point. Yeah. It definitely got us down the field. And then we went down the field and, I don't know, probably three and added. <laughs> uh, we, we have a penalty that moved us back. Because um, that was that third quarter hunting. when we did that? No, that was in the second so quarter. That was after their field goal. First goal. Okay, yeah, because there, there was four minutes left on the clock could have been before half. Oh, yeah, it could have been, been the drive that ended, we ended got in the interception. Field goal there. It was. Was that Stoops' fault, or was uh, it a Gabriel he threw it too hard and high and, and know, Stoops he, tipped it up? When he does throw it over the middle, he seems to gun it. Yeah, no yeah. touch on it. No, no touch on no the no ball. Yeah. There, was and, a, there was a swing route to um, Gavin Freeman that would have picked up a first down, I think, in like the third was quarter. was rifled. And he rifled it. Yeah. I mean, if he just lays it in there, Freeman's got enough wheels, enough moves. Well, who did he miss? Yeah, it was something similar on the sideline as well. He missed someone. It would have been a touchdown if he, he threw it five yards in front of him. Same, same. It was gray. It was uh, I think it was in that first quarter, maybe. I don't know. It's he does have no touch on the ball. It's wild. It really sucks. The Willis fumbled. He went he went low to try to go head on with the defender, and the defender went just a little lower and put his helmet yeah, right on right the ball. On it. And then later in the game, and it's forward, Willis, which is a weird Willis yeah. hurdles a guy, and I was thinking, damn, if you'd have hurdled that guy on that play, you would have scored. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like he was going to not make that same mistake. And I've again. heard them talk about on their podcast that that when they go into a game, they have to be they think about a specific situation that they're going to try to hurdle. They said it's never spontaneous; hmm. it's always. And he said Jeremiah Hall mentioned that he learned that from Flowers. Because they had the big Texas hurdle, you know, mm-hmm. and and he was saying that it's like a fullback tradition at OU to try to hurdle somebody at least once a season or something. Like that. But you <laughs> well, have to go DBs into the game planning, low, right? planning on doing gonna, it. They don't want to hit you up high. Yeah. they're going to lose that battle, so they're they're going for your legs. <laughs> yeah, and you know the type of play when you have the ball and uh, uh, out on the edge. Yeah, a lot of times on the sideline, and you just go for it. That's cool. So, one thing that you brought up, which is a little in the weeds, but I think it's important. Congle snap. So Congle replaced Rame. Yep. And uh, I noticed it, you noticed it, the snaps were a little bit in the off. En- in the end zone, you can really see it. Uh, it's one of the things you can Congo's, see in the end Congo's zone. Congo's snapping the ball to the right side of Gabriel, and he's a left-handed quarterback. 
Is so he? with every snap, he's he's having to reach down and to the right to get the ball. Kind of like the magic bullet. And turn his shoulders back to the left to try to start scanning the field yeah. or, or, or a quick throw or whatever the, the play is. So it doesn't sound like much, but every single time when you see it, it's costing you a little bit of time for the, the rushers are coming in on you and causing disruption of you having to break the pocket early or throw it because you're hurried and you didn't you weren't ready to throw it mm -hmm. and that seemed like it happened a lot in the third and fourth quarter it was every single snap it seemed like it was low and right low and right do we are you are you allowing that to be a little bit of uh, an excuse for why the offense wasn't as productive as they could be i mean it didn't help but it, i mean i don't think it cost us points necessarily or yards or first downs it, it probably did cost us a couple first downs yeah it's a significant thing little little thing that consistently was happening and to me it seems like you could just have gabriel step one step to the right and take the snap kind of like you know the punter you know mm -hmm. the punters don't line up directly behind the the deep snapper they're usually one side or the other and they kind of snap it at a little bit of an angle it seems like you could have just had gabriel step one step to the right and then that might throw off some of your running plays as far as where the running back's supposed to be inside or outside the tackles or whatever but if if he can't correct it on the sideline that seems like something you should be practicing in between with all the time we had on the sideline from all these three and outs it <laughs> seems like something you could have corrected during the game by practicing the snaps on the sideline yep but a lot, lot of little things that add up to what was almost I don't know if I called a close game. It wasn't, but it was a game that almost got in jeopardy. Uh, it got really close. And a couple different stretches down at the very end of the fourth quarter got that way. It was a very bad feeling. I, I think it, I, I noted and some others noted that it felt a lot like the re-kick game, um, that we we're trying to steal defeat from the jaws of victory. I'm glad we didn't. We One didn't, of the though. positives from playing that style of game besides just winning is we had a whole bunch of defensive recruits in town, mm -hmm. and the defense balled out. They did, yep. and it sounds like we're already seeing a little of the fruits of that labor. We're seeing some indications that some recruits may be making some announcements. Maybe one commitment was made last night. A uh, lot of no positive news there. More positive news, we are going to go to a bowl game. We're getting those 15 practices, or 14, depending on which game we go to and when we can start practicing, but we're definitely getting that time. One of the positives that may come out of it that you would go overlooked typically is that we're going to be playing in a pretty bad bowl which is going to be really early which may be great because we get all 15 practices we probably are against a, a lesser opponent which maybe even gives us a chance of a victory which incrementally is a little bit good and then the team the the coaches can refocus their efforts to the portal and the next year building the recruiting class and everything it goes into success in 2023 rather than having a prolonged period waiting for the bowl game distractions between that and the transfer portal etc I'm, I'm a little optimistic that this is going to work out pretty good for us there's actually a couple of matchups that could happen that aren't that bad um, there's a chance to play Arkansas I think there's a chance to play Ole Miss Iowa maybe I mean, if we can go, and I think, the yeah, outside of those, the only other one was the one Eli mentioned earlier this week with the Air Force and the Armed Forces Bowl. But I, we're going to – there's going to be these lower bowls, these mid-range bowls that are going to want OU there. Oh, yeah. And for the for the helmet Huge name. And the, the name. So you, you could see – I mean, it would be interesting to see one of those matchups where mm -hmm. it, I don't want to play Ole Miss. They're better than us. Well, I think one advantage <laughs> of playing an SEC team would be – that you it doesn't take much to get the team motivated for it i would be a little concerned with an iowa and very concerned with a, an air force it could be it could be reminiscent to arkansas and 2001 and yeah if we play iowa i mean that game might be <laughs> yeah. it might be three to nothing I that's a good point <laughs> what was the final of that game 10 to 0, ten to ten zero. zero. yep yep most they sacks had, that was a 10 a.m kickoff any, they had like, new year's day most like sacks in any yards. bowl game yeah. something insane yeah well, what was the most insane was that it was in the Cotton Bowl, and I'm, I was sitting in the Texas section. So that was very weird <laughs> to have that perspective. Extremely 
disconcerting. Oh, yeah, that would be really weird. Was Nate Hibble it was quarterback? It was bizarre. Yep. Nate Hibble was, was the quarterback. Hibble. Roy Williams, I don't know how many tackles he had that game, but he was all I over the I think it was place. 1,057. But, to, <laughs> but to, in today's time, he would have opt out more than likely because – Yeah. Because that game, I mean, the Cotton Bowl was a New Year's Day game. Yeah. I don't know if it is any. Is it still a New Year's Day game? I don't think it's a fi- – no, not officially. It's not a New Year's Six game, but uh, – It is. Oh, it is a New Year's yeah. Six game? Okay. Yeah. But so the Cotton Bowl's always been just outside the BCS Bowl game era. Right. And so maybe you get some players that would play a game like that. But, I mean, more than likely a guy that's going to be a top – 20 draft pick. No, was, I think we're going to get that one out nowadays. Yeah, and I think we're going to get a lot of guys bowing out this time around. I just hope we find that information out as soon as possible and we can focus on the guys who are going to want to play. So we've got a night game at Tech. Night game at Tech, 630 again, is that right? Yep. So yep. OU opens up at a, as a three-point favorite. Is that what we saw? Yep, yep. three. So that's interesting. We'll be um, watching the game from here. Yes, we will. I say we should probably eat something with tortillas. Mm. Maybe some um, fajitas. That's an interesting. Well, some, we were thinking about along getting, those lines. We were thinking about something like that before we even thought about <laughs> that tie-in. So, I, I think that that's a great idea. Um, that that that's a very good idea. Now, don't go throwing tortillas all over my house. That, that's not <laughs> no. Every time we score, we we'll just throw them throw in the street. We'll go throw them we'll in throw the neighbors. Yeah. How about if I frisbee them? Is, is, yeah, that, well, is that different than throwing? Yeah, it, it's all the same. Oh, okay. If we can if you can land them on my neighbor's roof, that, that's that's the trick. <laughs> So that, that'll that be fun to look forward to. We'll have a midweek pod this week where we're going to cover some preview of the Texas Tech game as well as just what comes next. We may have a little bit more information about our bowl possibilities, but at least we can speculate. We may, in fact, have some interesting information about recruiting, which gets us gives us reason to be a little optimistic. And there will the be future. coordinator interviews on Monday. We'll so have, I wonder after that. Levy watches this film... Because what he said yesterday was, I got to do a better job putting us in better position to go be able to create some first downs and some momentum. Proud of the way our guys started, but obviously after that we really struggled, and that's not good enough of a statement for me. I want him. I want him to come out and say, I completely neglected the fact of not running the play clock down to be more complimentary football, and to just f- make the game flow better. In terms shorten of the giving the defense rest. You have a lead, just shorten the game. Yeah, I, I think it would be Every good to see him he should, acknowledge He exactly should fall on the sword. Wrong. I mean, it should just be flat out, this is 100% on me. I didn't recognize the fact that we were snapping the ball at 25 seconds and we should have been snapping it at five to shorten the game So with a big lead. Maybe it's not his fault, though, because maybe he's busy figuring out the, game, the play. Maybe it really is Venable's. Maybe he's the guy who should figure that out. Well, just but, take take longer to call on the play. He's but, definitely the guy who should be but managing. But you can't that. ask him to take longer to call on the play. You need he needs to be doing his job to figure out what play is he wanting this offense to run, and and the next step is somebody else with a big picture view of it saying, "All right, that's great. Play that play, but you've got to snap the ball." Later. With all the assistants you have nowadays and analysts and all that stuff. Yeah, why isn't an analyst? Why is on Matt this? Wells not saying, "Hey, let's." <laughs> I, it's the stubbornness. I think he just thought we can go in there and keep running our offense and we'll at some point unlock something to move the ball down the field on, and get and some first downs. And, it, and it, no, it won't matter. But obviously, with that many three and outs, it did. And never we adjusting. We should never gamble. There's no reason to gamble with that, right? Ne- yeah. Right. Never adjusting is just the mindset of we're Even better, we're better stubborn, than this and we're not going to change. How can it last for three quarters? Yeah. Okay, you're stubborn through the second quarter because you had a great first quarter. I don't know if he's quarter. even okay. stubborn on the second quarter. Yeah, the game's still out. Yeah, I'm time. fine on the second quarter. Okay, third quarter, you still try and do what you do, and it's not working. But now we're to the yeah. fourth, for the love of God. Get like you said, there's, there's 80,000 people in the stands wondering why we're – We even – one of the punts we had, we punted with 16 seconds on the yes. clock. Why are we punting with 16 seconds on the play clock? Yeah, clock's <laughs> running, and we're hurrying up and punting. Yeah. Even the punting is hurry up. It was so weird. It, it, but hopefully we'll hear about that. Maybe so. I, I know that the reporters will hold his feet to the fire hopefully. on that on Monday. Yeah, there's a lot of fun. And I want to see if it's flying. excuses or if it's a fall on the sword and this is my fault. I've got to be better. We're, we're going to study that. And from here going forward, I will do a much better job of, of coordinating that. Yeah, we need to hear that because there's, there is really no excuse for it. 
even if even if your offense is predicated on the on really getting the play in and, and moving fast, what indication would you have to say that that is a successful strategy? I guess that would be the only way this makes sense is if you said, we have an advantage over the defense if we come up to the line immediately, look it over, maybe a one audible, then we go before they can react. But there's no success factor to justify that behavior at all. And that would be the only reason you would give up this obvious benefit of running the clock when you're ahead the, that way. Yeah, you have to have success. He's got to have plays. good answers. And this here isn't the only time concern. we've talked about it all season. No, there's been other games. I mean, it's we have. Why ain't you listen to us? We haven't been ahead on many other games this season, but <laughs> there are other other instances where we've talked about a post game pod, not Everyone in has. this length of, not, not to this extent, but that it's there's never been, been this. There's been plenty of other obvious. evidence that it should have happened before. Right. So, no it. We beat the dead horse. Yeah, well, we'll see. But we'll be beating it again, and we'll be angry in the in the midweek pod if we haven't gotten good answers at that yep. point. I agree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask to see the manager at that point. Yep. And we'll carry We're going to carry yep. on this. Absolutely. Well, we may go to Rudy's. And, uh, yep, we can go to Rudy's we, on Monday and just yell it from our seats. And get thrown out. Well, that should be a question you submit <laughs> when they say, what question out, do you want to ask? We've got to ask that question. Depends on how belligerent you are. <laughs> Maybe word that question very specific to the situation and say, with your offense clearly not working, <clears throat> how can you not understand that we have to snap the ball with less than 10 at least, maybe five seconds on the clock? There's just no excuse to be that shallow. Like, there's, it shows a lack of depth in not only – we have no depth that player on the player's side, and from a coaching perspective, we've been so one-dimensional with that offense. So. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll, we'll – Circle back, and we'll see what's going on and see if we've gotten the right answers. We'll preview Texas Tech later this week. we got Thanksgiving coming up. Hopefully we're thankful for being in a bowl game, and hopefully we have a lot more to be thankful for for the rest of this season. Until then, Boomer. Sooner. Sooner.